I, I got it slammed in my head a little bit. Okay, now are we good? Hello, hi. Thanks, thanks for coming. Uh, so my name's Grace. Uh, you guys want to introduce? I am uh, Scott. I'm vice president, programmer. Like a little like dad, yeah, uh, but I've, I've made uh, three iOS apps. And yeah, I'll let. You. Right, go ahead. I'm Sita. I know nothing about iOS. Knows nothing about iOS. <laughs> right. he, yeah, and he's the fact he started this program. Yeah. He yeah. knows nothing about it. That's mm -hmm. great. You're in great hands. I'm Samantha. And then he doesn't remember. <laughs> I'm Zach. I'm a mentor. I've made one app in 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, today we're going to learn about, we're going to touch on um, Swift Playground. Scott's going to be helping me with that. And then the second half is going to be by um, Sida. And it's gonna, we're going to do UI Kit. We're going to make like this profile for a dog. It's going to be really cool. You know, it's something. So, um, Oh, also, we're going to have like an office hour thing where it's going to be on a Wednesday around 4 o'clock in like a Marston. We're going to dip out of the Marston room. And if you guys need help or want to hang out with us, just come through. We'll post it on our Facebook page, of course. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to be something, it's going to be like office hour, but, you know, it's for us to finish a project and we can help you with anything. And then, um, also, if you guys have potential apps idea, please let us know. We can help you out. We can like do something together. Yeah, yeah. Let us know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I already introduced myself, but my uh, name's Scott. Um, how many people have like uh, like touched Swift? Like, I'm just curious. Like, has anyone here like like played with Swift or anything like that? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. So like today, we're just we're gonna go like very very basic. Like if. You probably are familiar with these if you've like done any kind of programming, but this like assumes like you know nothing about programming or just like basic concepts and stuff like that. So we're gonna start um, like uh, we're gonna use a program like is everyone here like kind of well feel like a Mac? Everyone here has like Xcode like kind of ready, even though like I, I, like everyone here like we're gonna be using Xcode during this presentation just so you know. So yeah, um, and we're gonna use uh, Swift Playgrounds. I'm gonna show you here how to do it. Um, we're going to use like the Mac OS so we don't have to deal with like iOS simulator and or anything like that. Also, anytime during the presentation, feel free to ask questions. Also, this is recording, right? I just want to make sure, okay, before, before I get too yeah, far ahead. It's good. We're recording this. I just I was just making sure it was going before I really get into it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, Xcode here. Uh, this is something that I'll, I'll minimize it. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> It's okay. It's mine. It's, uh, yeah, it's okay. We won't. Yeah, this is. I, yeah, I don't look okay. at it. Okay, this is for later. I'm just. Okay, let me just move this over here. Minimize. Okay, so if you have uh, Xcode like pulled up, uh, you just hit new. Which um, and then it's called Playground. And I'm uh, we're I'm using macOS, so I don't. This doesn't like deal with pull up simulator and stuff like that. We're just gonna create a blank. Um, playground, so we can like play around with it. Let's go this, uh, next. I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. Well, my playground is fine. We, you can name it something else if you want. We'll just create it here. Okay, so yeah, it already. I'm, I'm just gonna it include some crap. I'm just gonna remove this right here. We're just gonna start completely from scratch. And uh, yeah, we've made our first playground. And I'm just gonna kind of. Uh, I'm gonna make it full screen. I'm uh, quickly show you around. Like on the right side of it, it just shows like a general output. Um, this is like right here. This is our code. This is like where our code's going to be if we just like start writing and coding. But well, I'll get that into that here in a second. And uh, this play button here, whenever I click it, it'll just run the code. Right now, I, it's like right now I don't have anything running. Uh, down at the bottom, uh, this area is like our console. Like when we do print statements. Which um, I'll get into here in a little bit. Um, we, uh, it'll print out right here at the bottom. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I'm gonna jump into uh, variables and constant. These are like the basics of um, like most programs have like some kind of variables or constants. Um, for con uh, for constants, I just like Google like constants. It's um, um, constants like don't change like if you like try to mess with them or something like that they won't you can't update the values and uh, they're declared with let and Swift and variables can change like if you want to 
rename like a variable later, you can. As long as it's like the same, well, it's like it's as long as it's like the same type, it's uh, usually won't matter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in and kind of show you like kind of the basic example I just did. Uh, bar, which is uh, this is these are variables um, equal to, like we'll call it my cool bar. And then if we just hit play real fast, it will. So it's running real fast. Is it, oh, let me zoom in a little bit. It's a little small. Uh oh. Oh, it's being weird on here. Let's see. Oh yeah. It, okay, it ran. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Just let me know when you guys. Is uh, can you guys? That, that that looks pretty good from here. Can you guys say that pretty well? Uh, yeah, I didn't. Okay. That, that looks big on here, but yeah, it's a bigger screen, so yeah. Um, so as you can see, uh, just like on the, on the side, it'll show like our output, which is 10, because yeah, we set our variable equal to 10. And uh, next, we're going to do uh, constants, um, which is uh, done with just let. Like for example, here's a constant like pi. Like you never change the value pi, like, like um, 3.14. Like um, yeah, it's it's basically this, it, it has it does like the same thing as variables except like you can't change them. So for example, like if I try to change pi to equal like five, for example, I'll get like an error because it's a constant because we can't change it. Versus like variables, I can make my variable equal to like twelve, or I can change it to whatever I want it to be as long as it's like a string because. Um, I'll get into the types here in a little bit, but yeah, that kind of. And as you see, it's uh, now the now the value is twelve. That's kind of the basics of uh, variables and constants. Um, like it's it's pretty it's pretty basic. It's just like uh, basically variables like hold like values. They're like jars. They can hold like many different types, which brings us into the next, which is like types. Uh, there are like too many types to count. Like to like to go over, but I included a couple. There's strings, which are like words, or like sentences, or like they can be, they're pretty long. Um, integers are any, like basically any number that's not like a decimal, which are doubles, doubles can be, uh, uh, contain decimal points. And then there's like arrays and dictionaries, which I kind of get into later. And there's like so many other types, I can't name, I can't name them all. Uh, there's two different ways to declare types. Um, like the first one is, uh, it's like called the safety way, uh, way which is like where you uh, say the type with uh, using a colon. Like if I want to make sure I'm using a string, I use the colon and then it, the type I'm using, and then I set the value equal to that variable. And then there's inference, which is like it's like the normal way, and I should not have capitalized these bars, but like it, it doesn't, really, but it should be lowercase. I'll kind of show that in code here. So I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna, like the basic we've we've already been using um, inference like that that's the, that's the way we've been using so far. But if I want to make sure, um, if I want to make sure like uh, like I want to make sure like this is a string like I'm I'm just calling the variable that I want to make sure this is a string. I just like set it as it's like a safety like this is this is gonna be a string. So I just like, and if I try to set it as a number, it will not be happy with me. Because like I, I said, like you can't set it as a number because I set it as a string. So I will make sure that it is a string. And um, um, we'll call this um, just like hello world, basic. This is like what most programmers use as a basic. So yeah, output hello world on the side, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna make this more interesting for like I'm just gonna call this like I'm gonna put my save. Let's see if I spell this right. Food. And I'm just gonna I'm I'm just declaring my favorite food right now, which is M and M's. I love M and M's so much. Um, but yeah, that's. Yeah, that, that that's like uh, that's how you declare like to make sure that, like the type that we're setting is a string. It's kind of it's kind of straightforward and uh, like and like uh, inference. 
is uh, what we've already done so far. So, yeah. Uh, dictionaries and arrays. Um, if you're not too familiar with like most, oh, um, uh, if you're not too familiar with like arrays or like dictionaries or anything like that, arrays is basically just like a list of items. Like I like um, like an example. I'm going to use this like a grocery list. Um, it's um, like most programs like have arrays. It's just like a bunch of items and it's just like a list. Honestly, it's pretty like it's pretty straightforward. Uh, dictionaries is like kind of more like. There's not, not too many programs use it. It's also like a table or like key value pairs is another better way I like to think of it. Uh, dictionaries is kind of, it's kind of, it's mainly like an iOS, like mainly iOS uses it. I haven't used too many programs where I've run into like two dictionaries too much. But yeah, I like to think of it as like an Excel document. That's just like in my head I like to think of it. So it's basically a bunch of like tables. So yeah, I'll kind of jump into arrays here. Just like as arrays. Um, See var. We used to call it my list. Like here, like it's just a list of items here. Um, I'm just gonna do like a grocery list here. So um, get some eggs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want some milk. I should probably and uh, also I can put some variables in here. Like I want to put my let's put my favorite food in here, which is some M and M's. One of those. Probably gonna need to get some. Let me see. Uh, what I put in here. Probably need to get some of this afterwards. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's like a basic list. You also can put. Um, you also can put like numbers and stuff as long as like you can put some numbers in here. But we have to like cast it as any. But um, like, like I'm gonna put the number twenty in here. But we uh, it'll give us an error. Because we're just adding like a bunch of like variables in here, like um, it assumes when we it assumes like uh, when we start putting values in, like it assumes like we're only gonna put strings in here, like once we get going. But as long, but we have to like kind of say, hey, we're gonna put any value in here. Let's just kind of uh, make sure that it runs. And as you can see, it gives us our list here of items. We got some M and M's, let me see, some deodorant, and the number twenty. And if we ever want to access, let me make this go away. That's just like our list of things. If, ever, if I ever want to like encode, like I'm going to use this little function here. I'll get into the function here. But I want to print, like, let's just say I want to print something out of my list here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to call my variable my list, uh, which is actually like this. And I'm going to, it's a, uh, and Swift. It like uh, for example, eggs actually starts at zero. It's like a zero-based array. Most like most programs like Java and stuff start at zero. So if I want eggs, I'll have to use the number zero. And uh, oh yeah, I can't use that as scope your numbers. I'm just gonna remove this for later. I'm just gonna remove this because I didn't really include that. So yeah. I'm gonna cast it so I get eggs, which is uh, the first item in my list, and uh, yeah, I can just like get any value like that, like in in my list of items. It's it's pretty straightforward. Next, I'm gonna to jump into uh, dictionaries, which are like key value pairs, and it's really good for um, like storing just like a bunch of different types of items that you want. It's, it's really good for key value pairs, which I will uh, like in my example. I'm gonna do. Um, what is it? I'm gonna do like a list of like traits and stuff about a person. Like if you wanted to create like some kind of identification, you might have like a specific table for like all your like traits and stuff like that. I'll show you here in my example here. So I'll create my dictionary here. So they're basically like hash maps. They're like hash like hash maps in Java too. Yeah, it's a, that's another way to think of it. If you I, I, if like yeah, it's like kind of a Java thing. So yeah, um, and, um, I'm gonna hit and uh, just set the type here as like I'm I'm gonna tell the oh. Uh, so just going back to uh, my list, so when you had twenty and then you had the array like this, you can store any value. Yeah. Why can you uh, access uh, an element in that array? Like when you uh, have to type in, you have to yeah. scope. No so scope the reason I was giving him the error is because he cast it as any. 
Yeah. And you have to do any inside brackets. Oh, okay. Because that counts it as in any array. But okay. once you did any, it said any is an object tag. It's not okay. anything. Okay. So if you put bracket, it would work. Okay. Right. Yeah, Jeff, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, for the, uh, go back to I'm jump, uh, for my dictionary, I could just kind of go into it, uh, but I'm going to kind of just for like safety purposes, I'm going to like say for this dictionary, I want it to be a string. So this is going to be a key value type, uh, like a string and a string. So like my key is going to be a string and my value is going to be a string. So I will just show you here in a second. So I'm going to create some. I'm just going to create a traits list. So we'll do some like my hair the hair color. Like my hair color is uh, brown, so I'm just gonna set it equal to brown. So yeah, yeah, it's brown. You can put like if you're coding, you can put like your own hair color if you want. Or like yeah, like uh, all kinds of brown. So um, next we'll do uh, eye color, which is like my eyes are green, so, so I will put green. And yeah. Um, oh yeah, my bad. And yeah, I could put like some more in here if I want. I'm gonna put. Yeah, you could like keep going on if you want to. Like you can put. I don't know. We'll put like my height. Like uh, you can like, but I, I declared a string, so I'll just keep it as a string. I I should I could put any, but I, I'm just gonna keep it as a string. Like I should probably put a number. I'm just gonna put. I'm just gonna keep it as a string for now. So I'll just put like, okay, I'm six. Like, yeah, you can put. You can keep going from here. But yeah, that's kind of like the point of like a dictionary is like you can just like fill it up with a bunch of different types of values. I, I'm just using strings, but we could put like we can make another table of like numbers and like we can just do. I'll just do create another dictionary real fast, which we'll have. Um, we'll just like store some numbers in there real fast. My. We'll call it my number dictionary, and yeah, we'll we can just um, yeah we can do some numbers in here. If I can spell. That's the problem. Okay, uh, so here we are. I'm just gonna put. I can I can just put numbers in here. Like I can put my number. Or like, like we, I, we can like create a phone book and stuff like that, like emergency equals. I'm probably misspelling that, but yeah, you could like put like nine one one. Like we could go on, but yeah, it's kind of like the basic deal of dictionaries. Like you can store every, every, different types of values for like different keys, and like if we want the output of our uh, of our dictionary, we can just do my dictionary. Dictionary. It's, it's it's pretty similar to arrays. You can just do like my. I want the hair color. Give me the hair color of it. So we'll just run that. I, oh, we get optional because uh, when uh, print when when it's printing optional, it like because it might not be valid. So it kind of puts an optional like the sub like the key might not be true. So uh, just like as a back of it, puts optional in brown, but it's. It would like if we were to like u like use this later like we're gonna use this later in a function, it will uh, it will give us a string. But just for this print case, it's not sure, so it's giving us an optional just for safety precautions. It doesn't really like to throw nil. So okay, uh, we'll jump in the next type. There's L, uh, there's if and there's else if. This is just a bunch of different like cases. Like if you want to, just like run. Like I'll, I'll show you here in a, as an example. It's pretty straightforward. Like so. You can do like if statements. Uh, so we'll just do. I think I was like comparing some stuff. So like my dictionary. Like if we want to compare like a dictionary, we'll just like do hair color. If my hair color is equal to brown. And we also can do like and uh, we can do and with uh, like two and signs as uh, like so basically it has to have both these things in order for this statement to run, which would be pretty explanatory here. 
eye color. So we got um, basically I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm running like a, just a statement to make sure like that like this dictionary has both these values brown and green in like both cases, which this will run. It'll, this if statement will run like the code inside of here will run because our dictionary does contain both these values. Like the hair color in the dictionary is brown, which is uh, what's inferred by uh, the double equal sign means like is equal to this value. So basically this code's gonna run, so I'm just gonna say like, um, if like my hair color is equal to brown, then um, it's, um, this, and then you probably actually like look like me. So I'm just gonna say, hey, you like look like me. But yeah, and then when we run this piece of code, it's gonna output like you look like me because the dictionary of hair color is equal to brown, and the, the dictionary of eye color is equal to green. So yeah, that's why that runs. But let's just say, let's just say I want to, let's just say the hair color of this like person that we have in here is his hair color is not brown. Let's just say it's green. It's interesting die choice. But yeah, it's not going to run because like the like one of our value, one of our conditions is not met, um, which is uh, the brown is like the hair color is not brown, so it's not going to run. So uh, we'll have like an else statement. So if it doesn't run, if it doesn't run this piece of code, it's going to run. Hey, Mike, it's just, it's going to run this piece of code right here, which will be. Um, thank you. I'll just put like, no, I'll just put uh, you. Look weird. Yeah. And then, yeah, it says like you look weird. So uh, we also can do like another statement, like if we want to, like, uh, if we just, if we want to run, like, if this doesn't run, run this. So we'll do like else if. So like basically if this code doesn't run, we're gonna run it's gonna run this statement next. So let's just say the like the hair color may not be the same, but the eye color is pretty similar. So we'll have like a backup situation for that. So we'll do like my dictionary. Maybe make sure you grab the hair. Eye color. We'll do like so we'll do like if it's equal to green, nice eyes. So we'll, when we run this code, it's going to run, uh, uh, it's going to print out the nice eyes because, like, the eye value is still green. Um, it is, uh, so it should still run. So we can run that. We'll say nice size because uh, what happened was it skipped over the first value because our brown, like our hair color is not brown, and then it ran the next statement because our eye color is green. It's just like pulling from the dictionary. And yeah, that's kind of the basics of uh, else if, like if statements and else if statements. And we can do as many uh, else if statements as we want. We can just keep on going. Like we do like if like, hey, maybe the hair color um, like might be like a different color. We want to print out something else. We can just keep on going with LSIS and like handle all different kinds of situations if we want to. So yeah, that's kind of basics. Uh, for loops and while loops. Um, these uh, these are like good ways to like kind of iterate through like basically run something a bunch of times. Uh, it's uh, it's it, like for like there's two different types of loops. There's actually um, like these are, like the main two like, loops that you'll probably end up using, uh, which is a for loop and a while loop. A for loop. We'll keep going based on a range of uh, numbers, so uh, like from like one to ten, or like from like a hundred to one. It just like it's based on like a value and a range that you put in, and a while loop will just keep on going till uh, certain conditions are met. I'll I'm going to show you that here, right here. Um, I'm just going to comment this little part out here. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, comments in Swift are just uh, double slashes. Like so, if you don't want this code to run. I'm just like hit, uh, hitting the slash button too. My uh, comments are good for like uh, removing some code that you don't want to use, or just like uh, putting like what something's for. Um, so yeah.
Next, we're going to run the for loops here. So for for loop, you just start with four, and then uh, we'll just do a type. Well, most people, there's, a, there's probably a better, like you probably use like a better index, like most people use i, and then you do, um, and she, she, she was the way I wrote. Oh, yeah, and then a four. This will, um, this is just like a way to do, like a, an easy way to do a range, uh, which is, um, so this is a kind of quick breakdown of the code. Um, so four is like, this, we're telling it we're about to do a for loop. I is our value that's going to change, which you will see here in a second. Um, and um, then like from one to 10, that just kind of like runs, like we're like running from like, this basically got to run uh, 10 times. Uh, you, you'll see that here, here in a second. So um, now let's go ahead and print out our I value, which will, uh, this is basically, this piece of code is going to run 10 times. So you will see that here. And our I is like uh, what, like basically what time it's running. So we'll just say this is the time this has run. So yeah, if we run this, it's uh, as you see, it has run uh, ten times. Like it's just um, it's printing out uh, ten times. It's just the way like uh, loops work. Uh, there's more complicated, sophistic uh, ways to use loops. This is kind of just like a basic way of doing it. Like if you want to, you can like do like reverse, which is like uh, re reverse. So yeah. So I want like oh, this will go backwards. There's there's all kinds of like clever ways people like use like for loops. Um, like, like, especially like in like computations and I mean like uh, like in like games and stuff like that, people find, like find ways to, like create multiple enemies and it's just like an easy way to like not repeat the same thing. Uh, like keep like coding like print this a bunch of times. It's like just an easy way to prevent you from like writing the same line of code over and over again. A while loop is just uh, run until uh, certain conditions are met. So um, we'll just do, we're going to create a new variable. I'm just going to call it x. I'm like not, not being that creative. Uh, we'll just do like while x is like that's not while x is not equal to ten. We're just uh, this code's gonna run until it's uh, x is uh, until uh, x it, like while x is not equal to ten. This uh, this is gonna just uh, inside these brackets. This co this uh, code's gonna keep on running. So. Um, or you can kind of just do the same thing. Where we print the same line of code over and over again. So we'll just like print off. I'm gonna comment this out so it doesn't get confused. So yeah, like we can just say this is the um, like hmm. We'll just say x is equal to and then uh, th like if we run this this is this would be like an example like an infinite loop so we want to make sure this stops after like 10 times like uh, after 10 times so we're gonna do like X like every time this uh, every time this runs we want X to add to itself <clears throat> so this will only run uh, 10 times yeah I'm all I used it so yeah, um, as you see the outputs, uh, x does eventually equal 10 and it escapes from this loop. So we don't have like an infinite loop and like uh, nothing like crashes. It would like, if it would crash. Like, so if we just like removed it, it will like eventually like, it will like just keep going. And, and, like it, like it, it's like it will eventually probably it will eventually crash. I think it, it will just keep on going. It will it will eventually crash, which is if we don't stop it. But yeah, that's not something you want to do, especially like on a phone and stuff. Like I've like uh, especially I'm actually surprised I haven't really run an infinite loop inside playgrounds. But like as you can see, it's, it's just going away. But like it will eventually crash. Yeah, it's not really in. You know, you, uh, you, it's like a, that's a specific like C plus plus like thing. Like, I, like it's all, there's, a, there's a couple other programs, programming languages that do it. Uh, I know like C plus plus is an example because plus plus like yeah that's like one reason why it's called that.
Let me see. I think. Oh yeah. Let me get out of this. Oh yeah. You guys can see that the computer's like uh, uh, fans going on because of the infinite loop. I because I, I, uh, I just stopped it. I think. Let me clear this out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull up this computer. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on from uh, loops to functions. Uh, so, like, uh, if, you, if you've done, like, most kinds of math, like, you've probably uh, done, like, I've probably heard of a function. Uh, the way I like to think of functions, like, you put something in, you get something out, which is in most cases. Sometimes you can just run a function, just put some input, or you can just, um, or, like, sometimes you don't have to have any output, it'll just run something. Functions mainly just do something. It can have an input, it can have an output. Most of the time it will have like some kind of input. Sometimes it will have some kind of output. But it's, that, that's what they're good for. So I'm, in this example, I'm just going to create a function that like squares a number, for example. So, and uh, it's, functions are started with a, uh, just a, a func, which is like, I don't, it's, I don't know why Swift does it, but a func is like what, uh, what they use to Iterate that we're making a function. So uh, we're going to call this function squared. And then we're just going to put in this. Uh, like, so we have like what, what it is and what it's called, what our function's called, which is called squared, which is what it's going to do. It's going to square any number we put in. And then this next part is where we uh, send some numbers in. So passing in a number is we just do. Uh, we call it, like what we're going to call the value. We call it number. We're going to say our number is going to be an integer. Uh, the number is what we're going to pass in and what we're going to square. Like so, if we like for example, like in this like this base, this is just a basic loop program. So if we pass in like three and we square, it, it's going to be nine. So like the number in this case is nine, and the output's going to be. I mean, like the number we pass in is going to be three. The output we have is going to be nine. So. Yeah, and we're since we're outputting something, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna output an integer, and we're just going to put it in some braces, which is where our code is gonna go. So, it's telling us we need to return something. So, in order to return something, we just type in return, and then uh, we just we can return a number here. In this case, we want to take our number, which is called the number. And then we want to multiply it by itself, which is how you square something. Okay, so we just made a very, very basic function. So what we're going to do is that we're going to type in like squared. That, that this is our function actually auto completes it for us. And like, uh, let's just say we're going to well, what, the square root. Of, we want we want five squared, which is going to be twenty five. And um, we want to, We're going to output this, so we're just going to do print and when we run this, it's got to run through our little function, and we're going to get 25. And uh, so, and, and that means our function works. So, what's basically going on here in this statement is actually print is actually a print is actually a function by itself. Uh, it's it's like a function that's kind of pre like pre made by Apple and is like included in like the playground in the library. It's basically a pre made function that outputs like whatever we pass into it. And then we're uh, using a function called squared, which is uh, what we just made, which when we pass in a number, it multiplies it by itself. And then we get, in this case, 25, as we passed in 5 and then 5. We send the 5 to the squared function, and then the function multiplies uh, the number by itself, and then it returns, like in this case, 25, which is what's outputted. And that's like kind of the basics of function. And I'm kind of, I've kind of used like a lot of time, so I'm just going to jump to, uh, does anyone have any questions before we uh, go jump into our, uh, we're actually going to make an app next, I was just trying to jump through like the basics of like Swift the best I could. Uh, anyone have any questions or anything like that? Okay, when I get up here, I, I think I closed your Xcode presentation running yeah. infinite loop. At least the fans have stopped. <laughs> I was worried that your computer was going to catch on fire, which, been, which has happened to me a couple of times. It's happened to you a couple of times. A couple of times. Yeah, so if, uh, if that happens, if you have an infinite loop, what you can do is uh, just comment out the code and just run the program again. Yeah, that, that's that, I thought I did that. Was it still running? Yeah, it's running. It was still running. <laughs> oh, I thought I stopped it. I wasn't paying attention. The number is going up. 
Uh, you, can just, you can just shut down Xcode, which is what I did. I, I thought I did stop it. You should have just played. You should have just ran it again, and it was stopped. I thought I did that, and that it just get, I didn't realize it was still running. But yeah, yeah, I don't use playgrounds that much. So uh, but yeah, playgrounds are just really good when you just want to like jump in and like write some code, see if it works. Xcode is like really when you start making something, like when you really start making an app. Because like Xcode comes with like a lot of luggage and stuff like that, so it's very confusing. <coughs> Playgrounds is just like where you just jump in, just like just have some fun with a little bit of code. Okay, so let's get started making an app. Uh, first of all, let's go over UIKit. So UIKit is what uh, we use to make UI elements in our app. Uh, this is a sample app we're going to be making. So as you can see, there's a bunch of different UI views we're going to be using. Uh, the first one is a normal UI view, which is basically like a, a rectangle or something with a color. And uh, we use a UI label, which is just text. We use a UI image view, which is uh, a view with an image in it. And UI text field uh, has a one line input. And then UI text view, you can add in multiple lines of text. And then we have a button at the bottom. <coughs> so uh, if you guys were here for the first meeting, you saw that I was using storyboards to like add in elements and stuff. Uh, so there are two ways you can kind of add in UI elements. One is the storyboard. It's like, we'll see how it looks, but it's a screen. You click and drag elements, and it shows up on your app. But there's also a programmatic approach where you make all the elements in code, and then it still shows up on your app. So for all our tutorials and stuff, we're going to be using the programmatic approach but both work, and uh, you can actually use both at the same time, uh, using like skeletal storyboards or whatever. But uh, I'll still go over how to use storyboards, and then we're going to switch to programmatic when we make this app. <coughs> okay, so let's open Xcode and make a new project. So we go to File, New, Project. Uh, we want a single view application, and let's just give it a name meeting to demo. <coughs> I'll just save it on the desktop as well. And should be making it my computer die after that infinite loop? Oh, did I bring your battery? Okay, no, I was joking. All right, there we go. <laughs> so here is our Xcode. And here, let me close this app. So this is the app we're going to be making. Uh, all right, I hate the iPhone 10, especially on these screens. How do I close this? Command Q. OK, well. I didn't want to quit, but that closed it, I guess. All right, so we're going to be using an iPhone X for this demo. Uh, here is the storyboard I was talking about. It should come up if it loads. Uh, <coughs> so here you can uh, click and drag any elements you want. Let's just add in like a piece of text. So that's called a label. I already had that typed in. You can just do label and drag that. And let's put it in the center. So again, you go to the top right, see this button up here? That's uh, the object library. You can find all the objects you need in here and just drag them in. OK, so that's our label. Let's just run the app and see what happens. So first, it has to start our simulator. There it is. So the simulator is actually like a, uh, a full phone or a device running on your computer. It's pretty cool. All right, then there's our app. It's loading. And there's our, our label. Okay. So uh, we can't really do much with this app, I mean this label, because we just put it on the screen. Let's say we want to change the label's text. 
we would go open the assistant editor, which is the two circles in the top right. And let me zoom out of this. Yeah. And then we have to create a connection from the storyboard to our code. So we <laughs> we select the the label and we press control and we click and we click and drag into our code. And we insert an outlet, let's just name it label and connect. And there we have our label in our code. Okay, so if you want to change the label's text, yeah. Oh, okay, so here let me just close that. So you can press the two circles in the top right corner. It's uh, like beside the lines. You can see the mouse. You just press that and you get another view. You can change what's in the view too. You click uh, in these like file names. Uh, you can go to automatic, go to manual. <laughs> you can open up any, any other file you want in this assistant editor. It's pretty useful. All right, so now we have our label inside our code. Let's say we want to change the text. Uh, let's remove this. So, uh, what's this function that loads in here uh, automatically? It's called view did load. So this function runs uh, the first time your view shows up. So it's only going to run once. So let's just do label dot text. So this is uh, obviously the text in the label. We'll just name it um, word. And let's run it. So what we expect to see is the label should say word now instead of label. There. So even though it says label in the storyboard, it's not going to say label when we run the app because in the code we change the label text. <laughs> so you can do this uh, with, uh, with any types of objects you want. You just uh, click and drag them and then you connect them in the code. Um, you can also use auto layout in the storyboard. Uh, we'll be going over that really soon when we do programmatically, but uh, you basically go here and add constraints and you'll see that just in a second. Okay, so let's remove this outlet because uh, we're not going to be using it. We just delete this whole file actually. So we go here and do delete. And we want to move it to the trash because we're not going to be using storyboards. And it says label.txt is uh, doesn't exist, so let's remove that. And we also have to go into the info.plist file, and because this uh, still has the main storyboard, if you read that. So we have to remove that, just hover over it, and press the minus button, and it's gone. But now, if we run the app, nothing's going to show up. It's just going to be a black screen. Yeah. So now that we did that, we need some place where, here I'm just going to close this assistant editor, we're going to need something something to show on the screen. So we're going to have to use this window variable up at line 14 in this function. So this function runs whenever your app first launches successfully. So let's just do, uh, this is just some boilerplate uh, code you're going to have to write to use storyboards, I mean to use programmatically. Do window equals UI window. So I'm just going to type this out and then I'll tell you guys what it means. <laughs> okay, so this first line, line 18, uh, it basically creates a, here, uh, this should be root view control. So the first line, line 18, creates a new UI window for us to put all our stuff in. So if we just do uh, alt and click on UI window it shows you all the information about it so again that's uh, the alt key on your keyboard and whatever you select and then it shows you information about it so it says the background uh, backdrop for your apps user interface and the object that dispatches events to your views so then uh, the second line root view controller is our uh, our file here view controller right it's called a view controller, and this is called view controller. 
So this basically instantiates a type, a object of view controller. That's what these parentheses are. That's a constructor. If you don't know what that is, um, you can have classes. And to make an object of that class, you need a constructor. And this is the constructor for the view controller. And then we have to do window dot make key invisible. If we click, if we press Alt and click on that, it says shows the window and makes it the key window. Now let's, if we run this, it's still going to be black because uh, we haven't given uh, the view controller a color yet. So we can do that. Uh, view dot background color equals dot blue. So let's see what happens now. Now you can see the background color of the app is blue. But what's this variable right here? We never made it. So where did it come from? So if we alt click on that, it says the view that the controller manages. This is basically the view that every view controller comes with. And what are view controllers? Uh, well, you can think of them kind of as containers for your views, and views are just UI elements. So the view controller basically controls this view uh, that it's showing on the screen. <coughs> Let's say we want to change the color. Uh, we can change it to like green or something. But where's this color coming from, right? Because it's just dot green. What does that even mean? So what it's doing is dot, uh, what background color is, it's a type of UI color. So green is a pre-made like uh, a type of color that Apple provides us. We can just do UI color dot green, and it would be the same thing as dot green. Let's just do dot blue so you can see it's the same thing. So nothing should change here because it's still UI color. Yep, there it is. Okay. So now let's make a. Let's keep this and let's just change the color. So some something cool you can do in Xcode is <laughs> you can create a color literal. So you can just type in color and then press enter and you get this. It's like a color palette on your uh, in your editor. So you can just choose a color. Let's choose like uh, the screen. Make it a bit, a bit darker. If we run that, it should be that color. How do I do that? Okay, so you do, <laughs> you just type in color and it, color literal should pop up. You just press enter. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so let's uh, add in the label we had before. So let's create a UI label. Let's call it var. Remember, that's how you make a variable var label. Let's give it a type of UI label. <coughs> so here we've just created a label uh, of UI type label, label, but it says class view controller has no initializers. Why does it say that? Because label hasn't been initialized. Uh, it's just an uh, empty value right now. So what we can do to fix this is we can do exclamation mark. And that will go away. Uh, Scott didn't get into optionals that much, but uh, we'll talk about that really soon. What this basically does, exclamation mark, is that it extracts a value from that variable whether it has a value or not. It sounds kind of confusing, but let's say label didn't exist and we still had exclamation mark. <coughs> it would throw an error to us because it tried extracting a value, but it had none. So those are called nil, which is like null in other programming languages. All right, so let's create uh, the label. Okay, so label, we just use a constructor for UI label, which just sets a value for the label. So then we can do label dot text equals, uh, let's give it a text. But then if we run this, nothing is going to happen. And the reason nothing happens is because we've created this label, but we've done nothing with it, right? 
We just created it and given it a text. We haven't put it anywhere. So we need to add the label to our view. So we can do at view dot add subview. <coughs> and we see that this function add subview takes in a parameter of type UI view. So we can't use label, right? No, we can use UI label because UI label is a uh, derived uh, subclass of UI label. So it subclasses UI label, so we can put it inside add subview. <coughs> now that should work, right? Again, it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? <laughs> so we've added the subview, but we haven't said uh, where to put it. So we let's do ns layout constraint dot activate. Now, <coughs> what is ns layout constraint dot activate? Uh, well, constraints are basically what we use in auto layout, uh, which is Okay, let's go over auto layout first. Uh, when we make an, uh, let's say when we drag the label into our storyboard before, uh, let's say we're using an iPad instead of an iPhone, the label would, wouldn't be in the center because it's dependent on the pixel position it's at. So the iPad has more pixels, so I'm gonna be at the center. But if we do auto layout and set the constraints for the label center to be at the view center or the screen center, it will be at the center no matter what screen size you're on. So then these constraints are going to be our constraints for the label that we're going to uh, activate. <laughs> so if we made a, uh, let's say we made a constraint, uh, it won't do anything because we need to activate it. And this basically takes in an array. That's what these brackets are for. It takes in an array of constraints and then activates them all. So let's do label dot center x anchor. This is basically <laughs> the center uh, X point of the label dot constraint and let's constrain it to the views center X anchor. So what this should do is center the uh, labels X to the views X. So it should be uh, somewhere along this line. And then let's do label dot center Y anchor dot constraint view dot center Y anchor. Now this should work, right? See what it does. Nope, it doesn't do anything. <coughs> now, why doesn't it do anything? Well, we centered the label uh, and we uh, vertically and horizontally, but we still haven't given it any any dimensions. So let's do that. We'll just give the label a background color too. So we can do background color equals dot blue. So the label is going to have a text and it's going to have a background too. So let's do label dot with anchor dot constraint and let's make it a width of 100 and label dot height anchor dot constraint and let's give it 100 height too. And it still doesn't show anything. So, uh, there's something wrong here. All right, let me check my code, my uh, other code. All right, let's just look at this. So we make the label here, and we give it a text, and we give it a, oh, okay, okay. So this is what we forgot. Uh, when we use auto layout, we have to do this kind of weird thing. We have to do label.translate auto resizing mask into constraints. We have to set that equal to false. So let's just run that, and now it should show up. There we go. If you look uh, closely enough, you can see the word. word. So why do we need to do that? Because uh, that basically lets the label use auto layout. If we don't do that, it doesn't use any of these constraints. So it's kind of easy to forget that sometimes. So make sure you remember this line right here. If you want to use auto layout on any views, you're going to need that. Right, just minimize that. Okay. <coughs> so uh, we can we can do lots of stuff with this label. We can give it like a uh, text color. So we do text color 
equals.white. A lot of these uh, properties for these UI views, uh, UI elements are pretty self-explanatory. You can look up the Apple documentation. They have a list of all of them. And there uh, we see Word has a text color of white. We can align the text. We can do label dot text alignment and we can do dot center. Now again, we can do dot center because text alignment is of type NS text alignment. So if we do NS text alignment dot center, it's still going to work. It's the same as dot center. There we go. Okay, but um, there's a better way, or there's another way to uh, add our properties to our uh, label and UI elements. <laughs> because right now we have uh, all this all this stuff for label, and then let's say we had an another label, we would just have the same sort of stuff in this function, and then we would we just have a bunch of properties that are being set in a function. So what we can do is we can create what is called a closure. So this is what that looks like. Alright, <coughs> so what a closure is, is it's basically a function uh, that just runs. So if we look at this here, we know that functions are enclosed in curly brackets and they're executing using uh, parentheses, right? And we can have parameters in there, but in this case, we don't have any parameter. And that's why these parentheses are empty. So what we do here is we have this function that we've created, and then we immediately run it, and then set the value that it returns to label. So let's just go through that again. So we have this function on line 47, it creates L equal to a UI label, and then on line 49, it returns that L and sets L as the value of label. Does that make sense? All right, hopefully it does. Let's run this, and everything should work the same way. And it works the same way, but uh, here we instantiated it again. We we'll just comment that out, and it would still work the same way. So what's nice about closures is that, uh, let's see, all these properties about the label, right, we can just put them inside the closure so they're not taking up space in our, in our function here. So we can put it inside here. And then you'll notice we'll get an error variable used when it, within its own initial value because you can't use label inside here because label doesn't even have a value when the function first runs. So we have to use L, which is the... Uh, label we're editing and then returning to give the value to label. Yeah. So we just change this all to L. There's actually a forget. Yeah, so you can do this in huh. In the new version of Xcode you can like select multiple lines at once. I forgot how to do it. But there we go. <laughs> and if we run this everything should still be the same. Yep, looks the same. So let's say we want our word, or this uh, text label to be at the top. What do we do? Uh, well, we can change these anchors. They won't be relevant to us that much. I mean, we can uh, change the center X anchor and anchor it to the top, but we want to see the word. So let's take the top anchor of the word, which would be this uh, top border of this rectangle right here. Let's just do top anchor and constrain it to the views top anchor. This should work, right? Where do you expect it to be? Like, probably here? Let's run that and see what happens. No, it's not there. So, um, the reason it does that is uh, Apple kind of made things kind of annoying when they release the notch on the iPhone X. Uh, so when we do view.top anchor, the view extends from this corner all the way to this corner. So the view's top anchor is actually behind the notch. 
So this, <laughs> the word, the rectangle is hiding behind the notch here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so what we need to do is we need to do uh, view dot safe uh, safe area layout guide dot top top anchor. So the word needs a safe area because it's not safe under this notch right here. Uh, if we do that. It should be under the notch. There we go. <coughs> so the same thing applies to the bottom uh, because let's let's do this. Let's do um, label dot bottom anchor constraint to view dot bottom anchor. Now we would hope that it it doesn't go like below the the iPhone X's uh, like I don't know what you call it home line or something. Uh, but it does. It goes under that. So again, we have to do view dot safe area layout guide dot bottom anchor, and that should make it go above that home line or whatever they call it. So safe area is basically this region, uh, roughly about here. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, let's start making our app since we have like the basics of layout. Uh, let's create our label. So we'll just use this label as the title. Let's call it Pet Park. Uh, it's like a hypothetical app where you make a profile for your pet and it finds you playmates for your pet or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, so let's <coughs> let's keep the background color so we can see where the label is going. But we're gonna remove that later. Now let's also make uh, the font a bit bigger so we can do font l dot uh, let's see font, and we can do UI font dot system font of size. Uh, let's do twenty. So what this does, it sets our labels font to this font that we have just created. It's still recording, right? Yeah. Be long one. Okay. So there we see our text has changed and it's bigger. So let's uh, let's move it back to the top. Uh, let's go to uh, top anchor. Constrain it to the top anchor, and let's move the. Actually, let's keep that. But we don't want this uh, this text label to be this big, right? If it just has text that says pet park, it doesn't need to be this fat. Uh, so what we can do is we can set the width anchor to label dot intrinsic content size dot width, and here let's do the same for height dot height. Now this should make our label much smaller. There we go. So it's not that big square we had before. So what that means is it takes the intrinsic content size, the size of the text that's in it, and just sets the width and height to that. All right, let's remove the background color because we don't need that any anymore. And uh, let's make like the, here, where is the, uh, okay, so in our app we had this kind of background for our text, let's add that. So it's going to be of type UI view. So just call it background. Uh, it's going to be a UI view, and then equals. And let's again let's create our like mock variable or something. View equals UI view. This is what the closure is going to return. Return view. Uh, and remember, we need to execute the closure with these parentheses at the bottom. All right, so let's set uh, the view background color to, let's see, what do we want? So we can do the color literal again and change it. Let's just say the screen. And then remember, if we want to use auto layout, we have to do this big fat property. Uh, we have to set it to false, view.translates, uh, whatever, into false. And, uh, and now we can just set some constraints for that, but before we do that, we have to remember to add it to our view. Add subview background. 
then let's just set some constraints for that background just do um, dot top anchor constraint now we want uh, the background to be all the way up to the top of the phone so we shouldn't use safe layout for this uh, for this element so we do view dot top anchor and then background let's say dot width anchor dot constraint to the views width So this is going to give the background the same width as the view. But uh, it says optional access to width anchor. The, uh, the reason it says that because width might not, uh, the width anchor might not exist. Let's say the view uh, has no width. So we can change that. Let's just use background dot, oh, that's not background background dot leading anchor. Leading anchor is basically the anchor on the left side of the of, of the view. So we do leading anchor constraint uh, to the views leading anchor. And then we can do background dot trailing anchor dot constraint to the view trailing anchor. So that's gonna uh, constrain the view. Let's say it's over here. It's gonna constrain it to the views leading anchor, so it's going to be equal to that, and the trailing anchor equal to that. Maybe it sounds. Okay, uh, and then let's just give it some height. So we do background. And we have an error here because expect, expected a comma. Remember this is an array and we need to separate all the elements in an array with a comma. So we do background dot height anchor dot constraint. Let's give it a height of 100 and let's run that after we add a comma and what do we expect? We expect a background with some text on it, right? But our text disappeared. Does anyone know what happened to our text? It's one over the other one? Yeah, so <laughs> what happened here is that, let's just delete this. So we added the label, so let's pretend this is a label, and then we added the background on top of it. So it's covering the label. So a quick fix for that is just switch, switch the ordering of that, and if we run it, we'll see our text. There we go. So just keep in mind the uh, ordering of the subviews you have. You can also change it with properties but this is the simplest way to do it. Okay, now we have this. Let's add the image of our dog. It's not my dog. I just found it on the internet. So you can have them too. Um, let's do image, UI image view. And let's make our mock variable again. Let's just call it I UI image view. So UI image view basically displays a UI image as we see from the constructor. Returns an image view initialized with the specific image. So we we'll just add that. Let's leave the placeholder blank for now. I just return i and have our parentheses. Okay. So where do we get our UI image from? Uh, let's make a variable for the image. So let's do let image equals UI image, and let's look at the constructors for the UI image. So we have all these different types of things, but we want to <coughs> we want to do named. Uh, which returns the image object associated with the specific uh, file name. So let's use that. And let's just put image in here. But we don't have a file in here right now. We never put a file in our project. So where are we going to get our image from? Right? Because we This is the assets folder where uh, we can store images, but we see there's nothing in there. So I have my dog on the desktop. Okay. I'll go through the desktop. And I can just drag it in here. Now I have my dog image. And then we can do, since the image's name was uh, dog, we can just do that. And uh, this image will be the image of the dog. And again, we have to do i.translate uh, blah 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 into false. So we can use auto layout. So let's add the subview, view.add subview image. And let's just set up some constraints. Uh, image dot center x anchor because we want to center it. 
in the view. So view dot center x anchor and just center it uh, y to center y anchor dot constraint uh, view dot center y anchor and let's see what happens. That's a big dog, isn't it? Okay. Um, so what happened here was that our, this image uh, is actually pretty high resolution. So we didn't set a height or width for this uh, image, so it's going to just use the height and the, uh, and the width of the image itself. So we'll just constrain that to image dot width anchor dot constraint. Let's do like 100 and image dot height anchor dot constraint. Let's do 100. Let's also give a background color to the image. Let's do i dot background color equals dot uh, let's do orange. And let's run that. Look at my chart. Here. <laughs> so our uh, dog, our dog's kind of squished. Uh, not too good for him. So let's let's make it so it scales properly if the container of the image view uh, is changed. So we can do i dot content mode equals and we press the dot and it auto populates with stuff. We can do scale aspect fit and let's see what happens. There we go. Our dog is safe and it's uh, it's rectangle. Okay. Uh, let's make the image bigger. Uh, let's do with anchor. Uh, let's do 200. And if we see what happens. My charter thing is too big. Okay, uh, so we can see there is a bit of uh, a bit of the frame that isn't filled by the image because the image isn't that big. And it, if we do scale aspect fit, it only fits inside the bounds we specified. It won't go outside. Okay, now let's move it to the top. Let's do image dot instead of center y anchor. Let's do top anchor constraint dot view dot. Um, Let's constrain it below the, the container, the background we made. So let's not constrain it to the view, let's constrain it to the container. So container, or we called it background. So let's do background dot bottom anchor. And if we do that, there, it's at the top now. <laughs> Alright, I need to find how to charge this before it dies. Here. Uh. Oh, so long enough. Can I move this? Okay. There. Okay, it's charging. Um, all right. Now we don't want it touching the bottom, so we can add a uh, constant, and we can do like ten. Now we can see that it kind of moved down uh, by units of ten. Uh, that's because the constant is how much it'll change from that anchor. So if we did negative 10, the picture would actually go up and kind of hide behind the, or go above the, the background. <coughs> uh, let's, now we want a, a circle, right? So that's kind of more advanced. So we can change the, uh, the, 
border radius of uh, view and that's going to change the corners uh, of the, the rectangle. So we, if we want to change the corners of that, we're going to have to make it half the height of the rectangle to make it a, a circle. So it forms a semicircle using both, uh, both corners. So we're not in the background, we're in, not, a, not in the label either, we're in the image. We have to go into layer. So layer is basically what's rendered. Uh, that's all you need to know. You can do radius, corner radius equals, <coughs> so the height is 100, but we want 50 because that is half of 100. Now, we hope this is going to give us some nice corners on the image, but it doesn't. What it does do is it gets us some, uh, some like corners on the, the orange rectangle that's behind it. So to fix that, we have to do I dot layer dot mask to bounds, and we do false, and that will fix it. Should be true, not false. Uh, there. So what that means is that uh, the bounds that are created by like the orange rectangle behind it are going to mask anything that goes outside of it. Uh, let's just remove this orange background. Let's remove that. And let's make this uh, a bit bigger. So let's do 200. And if we do that, we have to make the radius 100 because that's half of 200. And now you're going to see uh, that it's a perfect square or a, a perfect circle, since the frame is a square. Uh, yeah, but it's not, because <laughs> because the, <coughs> the height of the image, uh, the image is scale aspect fit. So let's say the bounds of this image are like this big. The image is still contained within here. It doesn't fill to the whole square. So we have to do, uh, instead of scale aspect fit, we have to do dot scale aspect fill oh. pop up and now it should be a circle there we go okay um all right let's quickly just add a a text field let's just forget about the label that was here uh, because we know how to do that. Uh, let's just make this UI text field. So again, uh, let's make a bar, just call it text. Uh, <laughs> so UI text field equals, so let, uh, let's call it TF UI text field. We don't need any of these constructors, uh, frame or coder, because frame is uh, like a pixel uh, base size of the rectangle or the UI view, uh, but we're going to be using auto layout, so we don't need frames. We can ignore that, and we return TF, and then we run the closure. Okay, <laughs> and then we have to do translates. All right, now let's add it to our view. And let's set some constraints for it. So text dot top anchor. Uh, let's say we want it below the image. So we can do uh, image dot bottom anchor because the image bottom anchor is down here. So you want to make it go below that. So we do uh, some offset. Let's do twenty. And let's do text. Okay, let's just see what happens if we do this first. Nothing happens because uh, we haven't given it a placeholder. So we'll just give it that. Uh, enter your pet's name. Now it should work, maybe. There we go, and we can enter whatever we want, 
if you want to open up the uh, software keyboard in the simulator, you do Command K. There you go. But you'll notice if we press Return, the keyboard doesn't go down. We have no way of bringing this keyboard down, so we're kind of stuck. So let's fix that. Before we do that, though, let's just give it a background color, tf.background color. Let's give it a color literal again. Let's choose this yellow. <laughs> uh, let's also center it. So we do text.center x anchor dot constraint view dot center x anchor okay and uh, to, to fix this keyboard thing we're gonna have to use extensions and we're gonna have to use delegates so what are those uh, let's just add a extension really quick extension and extension is for view controller and it's UI text uh, field. So what this is, or UI text field, field delegate. So what this is, what an extension is, is uh, uh, like a place where you can add stuff to your classes without it having to be inside like these main braces. So it can be inside the class, uh, but it doesn't have to be inside those braces. The thing is you can't create variables inside here, so if I do equals zero, it's going to show me an error. Yeah, so extensions must not contain store properties. You can create variables inside extensions, but you can use functions. <coughs> so what this UI text field delegate is, uh, is kind of like a controller for the UI text field we have. So it's going to take any actions that happen uh, for the UI text field and relay it back to our view controller because it extends uh, UI text field delegate. All right, so let's do should return. <coughs> so this is just a function that's automatically created by the, the UI text field delegate. Uh, you can go on to the Apple documentation. Uh, they show all of these, and you can look them up there and find out which one you want to use. So text field should return. Uh, it means <coughs> if the return key is pressed, should the text field, or when should the text field return? So let's just do true. Let's do return true. And we have to return something because this function, as you can see, has an error bool. So it returns a bool. And now this isn't going to do anything because we have to connect it to our UI text field. So we do view or tf dot delegate equals self. Now, <coughs> what does this mean? So the delegate uh, basically means what is going to be handling this text field's uh, actions or the functions. And we set that equal to self because uh, cannot assign you want text field delegate. Okay, okay. let's uh, I think that's gonna okay, let's name it text. Yeah. All right. So we can't do it inside the closure because uh, the closure it's kind of weird when you use self. It doesn't allow using self directly. So uh, we can do it if we do like here. This should work if we do lazy. Do tf uh, dot delegate equals self. See that works. That works. But we're not gonna get into uh, why that works just yet. So just move this lazy and keep the delegate up here. So what this means again is the text has a delegate. It's going to delegate all the actions that are done in the UI text field. And self is the thing that handles that. So what is self? Self is the view control we are in. So self just references the object of the class that we're in right now, which is a class of view controller. And we can do that because self extends the UI text field delegate, which is what the UI text field needs to send its actions or whatever's happening because UI text field is a UI text field and it uses a UI text field delegate. So that should make sense and let's just run that and see what happens. <laughs> I 
So there's our text field, and we'll just type something. And but if we do return, still nothing happens because uh, there is something that is not right. Let's go back to this code here and see. What was uh, okay, okay. So this doesn't actually end the editing. We have to do view dot editing, and we have to do true. Yeah. So that should end the editing that's going on inside the view. If we do that, it's going to have the keyboard because we stopped editing the UI text field. So if we just do this, press return, and it uh, hides the keyboard. Uh, okay, uh, we don't have much time, so let's just uh, create the button and ignore this for now. So just create the submit button. So var button uh, is of type UI button. Again, closure let b equals UI button return b, and then we can do dot translates false. Use auto layout. Let's give the background color. Again, our color literal. Let's do this color. And we also want to give it some text, but we can just do like a v dot text because it has no property called text. But it does have a uh, something called a title a title label. So the title label is a UI label that is inside this button uh, button object. But we can directly set we can't uh, directly set the title title label there. So if we do uh, text equals something. That's not going to work. You have to use a special function called b dot set title. So just do submit, and for UI control state, let's do normal. So this will give us our button a title, and let's just add it to the sub view or add it to the view, and give it some constraints. So button, uh, let's set the bottom anchor, constrain it to the bottom anchor of this view. So view dot save area layout guide dot bottom anchor. And let's give it some some width. So we can do button dot uh, width anchor. Actually let's do button dot leading anchor dot constraint and constrain it to the views leading anchor. Uh, let's make it 20 from the left, so this will use the view's leading anchor and go over 20. And again, we need a comma because it's an array. Button.trailing anchor constraint view.trailing anchor. And let's do 20 and let's see what happens. Button, and we also have to give it a height, so height anchor not constraint. Let's give it a height of 50. This, it looks kind of weird, right? Because it goes off the edge here. And does anyone know why that's happening? <laughs> you, can, you can say it. No one else knows. Anyone, anyone else? No? All right, Scott, what's your idea? Well, you, you do use constraints. That's the only right thing you said. But, um, all right. Wow. <laughs> you do negative 20. Yeah, you can, you can do it other ways, but this is... <laughs> yeah, so this is one way you can do it. Uh, just add a negative sign here. So the reason it was going off the edge there is because uh, the submit was going to the trailing anchor of the button was here. And then we moved it 20, so it will be over here somewhere. That, that's where the trailing anchor of the button would be. But if we do negative 20, it goes 20 back here to the left. So that's why it does that. Now let's give it some, uh, let's make it look a bit better. 
Go to button. Let's give it some rounded corners. So layer again dot ra corner radius. And since the height is 50, let's give it 25. So we get those like semicircle round um, sides. And right now the button's not going to do anything if we click it though. So just run that and see what happens. Great, it looks nice, but it doesn't do anything. Um, so let's let's give it some uh, functionality. Uh, I don't know if I went over this in the first meeting, but you can do bun dot add add target uh, self selector. This is just some uh, syntax or whatever you should know right now, uh, but. You can look up what it means if you want to understand it, and we, we might go over it in another meeting. So you do bun dot add target action uh, is going to be the function we're going to call after we do touch up inside. So touch up inside means uh, you touch down on the bun and you touch up inside the bun too. So if if it was touch up outside, we would touch uh, touch the bun and then we would touch up outside the bun. But since it's touch up inside, we're touching inside the bun and touching up inside the bun too. So let's we'll just make a function. Uh, function handle uh, tap. And we also need <laughs> this thing at the start if we want to use selectors. And let's do like print something. And we add it here, handle tap. And let's run that. Also, when you run Xcode or uh, these apps, you don't need to save or anything. You can just press the play button. Yeah. So if we do that, we can see that one, two, three, four is printed out here. Okay. Uh, let's make it actually do something useful. So we can do button dot add target. Let's add another target uh, selector. Uh, let's do handle press for UI touch down. Uh, all right, so let's make a function for that. So what we want to do is maybe change the opacity or the color of the bun when we press down on it. So we can do UI view dot animate. And let's just do like point point three seconds for this animation. <laughs> and this animations parameter is where you put all the animations you want to perform. If you go undo, it, it has this weird uh, placeholder, right? This uh, parentheses uh, returns void. What does that mean? It means it takes in no parameters and it uh, returns nothing. So this is kind of like our closure uh, that we used before. This is a function, it takes in nothing and it returns nothing. So we can do button dot, uh, let's just do uh, alpha equals 0 0.5 and that is kind of like the transparency. And we get this thing that says reference to <laughs> uh, button enclosure requires explicit self. Uh, again, that's kind of Similar to the reason why we can't do self inside the closures, we have to use self .bun alpha so it knows we're accessing the button of the UI of the view controller. So let's connect that. Uh, we already did. Right. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so we have our button. We press down, and the opacity changes. It becomes kind of transparent. But it doesn't go back, so let's fix that too. So in touch up inside, that means we have let go of the button. So we can do UI view dot animate. Again, let's do 0 0.3 animations. <coughs> Self dot button dot alpha equals zero. That should be the right value. Yeah, it's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
I always forget if it's zero or one. <laughs> All right, yeah, there we go. There's our button. It doesn't do anything, but um, I think that's all the time. Yeah. So uh, if you guys want to add some more stuff like this, um, I can put uh, the completed apps code on the Facebook page. It's going to be on our, on our uh, GitHub group. Uh, the recording of this is probably going to be on the Facebook group too if uh, nothing was messed up. Um, other than that, if you guys want to add functionality to this app, you should do that. Um, it's good practice because just watching me do it isn't going to help you at all. You have to do it yourself. Uh, so maybe add this UI text view, add these labels, make the button show like an alert. Uh, there's some stuff I have here. You can get resources to learn Swift. Uh, this is Apple documentation. And UF also has like a Linda access for UF students, I'm pretty sure. And they have... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have like tons of courses and videos on iOS development, so if you want to go there, you can check that out. Too. Yep.